Before we get into talking about the client, I wanted to invite Nate to unmute himself. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Nate, thanks for coming on. Nate's only been with us. Uh, he just finished up his second week with us, guys. And his first week, he, he, he wrote 8K annualized premium. His second week, last week, he just did 5K. Uh, like it was like just it was like I don't know a few dollars under 5k that's just a heck of a start and I just kind of want to you know ask Nate a couple of quick things Nate I'm not going to take much of your time I know a lot of you guys need to be uh need to be on the system selling here in a few minutes there's four reasons why he got off to such a good start first of all he spent a lot of time and effort just to be prepared for the first day like he didn't come in all fumbly and bumble he was actually pretty prepared how do i know because i because uh, i was you know eavesdropping in some of his calls you know some of the recordings he also has a little bit of a background of sales so i'm not i don't know too much about that but it showed very important he puts in the dials nate came out on day one and basically did everything that we asked of him he puts in the dials he does the work and the fourth thing i feel like you know nate you're really trusting in the system and I appreciate that because yeah. to me, that's how it works. When you put your faith into what we're doing in the system, it, it makes it easier for you. So congratulations on, on a really good start. So let's just ask this, Nate, real, real quick. How much better are you, I would say, today? Here we are. It's just been a couple of weeks than maybe your first day or two. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I hope I can say this you know, completely transparently. I think I'm a different person. I thought I was prepared. I was as prepared as I knew how to be day one and day two. I bugged you and Brandon to death prior to my day one. But yeah, once once uh, the first few dials started happening and once the first bumbles, as you said, once I started learning learning my way through a little bit, it was it got easier and easier. And it's not I wouldn't say it's easy today, but it's I feel like I know a little bit, a little bit more about the carriers. I know a little bit more about how to help these people, uh, most of them. And yeah, it just makes it a lot smoother. It feels like I'm having conversations now instead of, you know, trying to, to manufacture something. So yeah, gotcha. I feel like I'm considerably better further okay. along. Okay. And that, and look guys, the reason I asked him this is because that's, that's the unique thing about our system. It's designed for you to sell at a high level. It's not designed for a part-timer. It's designed for someone to come in and sell at a high level because when you've got so many leads and a bunch of appointments on top of that, that are all exclusive and fresh right from day one, you're going to make a bunch of presentations. You're going to speak with more people. And that's how you get through the learning curve. I, I compare this because guys, look, I started somewhere, right? When I did face to face, I compare a system like ours within the first two weeks, you're speaking with so many people, you're basically the time frame for you to learn, to get through that learning curve. It's kind of like it was for me for my first 90 days. <laughs> like that, you're speaking with so many people that you're rushed, you're, you're being forced through the learning curve immediately. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you, Nate. Now, Nate, just real quick. We've got agents that are preparing to start. Uh, heck, we've got even agents that are, I invited a couple agents on the call that that, uh, that haven't even committed to us yet. But I feel like there's got to be some advice that you can give to an agent who's just getting ready, like maybe their first day. Like if today, if tomorrow's your first day, what advice would you give to that agent? I It's so cliche, but trust the system. That would be my, that and get to know, you know, get to know the script really well, at least as an outline, right? I mean, that, for me, that's what the, the script part helped. You you made a couple of, of corrections for me right up front, but I just, I really began to try to feel like it was bullet points instead of like word for word. And the others just to trust the system. I mean, it, you guys have been, it has not disappointed. The leads come, the, <laughs> the appointments come. I think it's about, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be exact, but I think my, my uh, AP has probably come about 20% maybe just a shade under off of calling the leads that did not set appointments, uh, you know, of all the AP I have. So that, to me, that's solid, right? If you got appointments nice. and your appointments represent about 75% or so, uh, it's it's solid. So I am I feel like the, lead, the system works and trust it. That would be my advice. Excellent. Nate, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to pick your brain real quick. Again, congratulations on such a killer start. Thank uh, you. Yeah, man, keep up the good work. All right, guys. All right, so your typical 
final expense client, the people that we're speaking with, these folks are, a lot of them are barely getting by. Most of them are retired and they're not retired, you know, from this 30 year career. They're basically kind of, <laughs> they've been kind of living a retired life, a good part of their life. You know, unfortunately that's just the mindset of, of a lot of these folks. And so they don't have much. And a lot of them, their income is literally the only income they have is from their social security, their disability, or their VA benefits. They have multiple health conditions. Unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of them that basically lived a lifestyle where they just don't have good health. I mean, it's a lot of them have had health issues for, you know, since before they became a senior, you know, when they were younger. And, you know, these are the people we're speaking with. So keep that in mind. Now, here's another thing. A lot of them have either had the insurance or they are just finding one excuse after another not to get it when they absolutely know they need it. Final expense insurance is not designed for some wealthy guy to have something put aside for his burial. That's not what it's, it's designed. It's designed for people that kind of have no other option. Like this is like that last resort to, to not leave their family totally screwed financially when, you know, when they pass. So they tend to procrastinate. It, it's weird over and over and over because they don't have a lot of money. I mean, that's what it all comes, comes down to. And, and this is what they will do. And I've had them tell me this. They will fill out a lead form. They'll set an appointment. And then immediately they start regretting it. It's like they start thinking, oh, I can't afford this. What am I, you know, or, or this is what they'll do too. A lot of them will, they'll go on with their lives. They'll just kind of like fill it out and they'll forget about it. And so now you're calling for the appointment and they're like, I did what? Wait. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what, what's this? Up? They're kind of, you know, they, they're not sitting there on the edge of their seat going, when's the insurance man going to call me? God, I can't wait to, to make a lifetime commitment for a monthly payment that I can barely afford. I can't wait. Ooh, I'm so excited to do that. That's not who we're talking to guys this is the opposite. All right. Think about it. Hey, look, let me just call you guys out. There's agents on this call. that are life insurance agents that don't have life insurance. Ah, so you can't say shit about these folks, all right? <laughs> One thing they're being told over and over by everybody, by people, they're seeing it on TV. Don't give out your banking. Don't give out, never give out your social security number. They are being taught never to do this. Their family's telling them never to do it. Insurance agents are telling them not to do it. So there's, they're like, they're kind of being trained not to to trust people. And this, the reason for that is because of that background, because of all these points, because of who they are, you know, the, these folks, they're, they're not guys. Most of them are not educated. A lot of them have basically lived their life trying to figure out a way to do as little or nothing, nothing and get by. And then what they'll do is like, I've sat in, and made face-to-face -face presentations with people that'll, that would make comments to me like, what wow, the, the government expects me to live off of this? I'm like, and I'm thinking, you know, well, you, you didn't work. You haven't worked for years. You don't look to me like, like you should be on disability, even though you are. And unfortunately, a lot of these fe people, that's just their mindset. It's all about beating the man. That's who we're dealing with. That's why, you know, this tends to be a bit of a, think about it, guys. We're selling these folks a product that they're never going to sit in. They're never going to enjoy. They're never going to get anything from, you know, what, what is it? Peace of mind. Yeah. Come on. You, you know what? It's all at the end of the day, it's all about them not being a shit head to their family. That's really what it, it's about guys. I mean, that's what this is at this point with our client. So you have to keep this in perspective. That's why we teach you to do what we teach you to do and ask you to say what we ask you to say. I want to bring up two things that agents tend to do. These are kind of like a, these are those, those closing mistakes. You know, when you're giving out the price, you should not be giving out the price. If you're giving these clients prices, you are failing you, yourself, your family, your clients, you're failing me, you're failing everything. We don't give out prices. We close. You're not a customer service rep, right? We know that. 
you're a professional salesperson or you're working and taking the steps to become a professional salesperson. With that being said, when you're new, there are these silly little things that we all tend to do on the first day. <laughs> we all, it's, I swear, everybody does it on the first day. The, the trick is, like Nate said, is to get it corrected and not do it anymore. One of the things I see a lot is whether you're using a, the, we have different closes, whether you're using the one price close, the Doug Massey close, or the three price closes, right? You do not want to give a bottom price below $65 a month. Because if you do, again, you're failing to do this correctly. These folks, their instinct is to ask for less. Whatever, if whenever there's a cost involved, how can we get away with paying as little as possible? That is kind of the mentality. So whether you tell them it's going to, here's what the insurance is going to be, $85 a month or $12 a month, they will likely say, do you have anything less? I, I swear, I I'm not kidding you. It's just like an instinctive, because of who they are, guys, the picture that I just drew, because of who these folks are. Remember, you know, they're not professionals, you know, who retired from being a doctor. They're, that's not who we're dealing with. You know, we're dealing with people that are pretty, a lot of them are pretty hard up. I hate to say it. You know, they, they've lived a rough life. And, and now they, they, they know, I don't really want to leave my family stuck, but it's not like I got a bunch of money laying around either. So we're trying to find that in between. When you're doing the one price close, honestly, I think you want to leave space to drop. I'm, I'm giving a price. When I'm giving one price, it's going to be really close around $100. And when they say, well, I can't really afford that, or do you have anything less? Then we, we deal with that at that time. But I am telling you, you will find times when you will give this price, whether you say $40 or $80, and they'll go, all right, sounds good. Okay, no problem. Well, they'll just jump on. That's why we don't want to go too low. Expect, look, guys, one of the things we're teaching you is when they say, well, I got to think about it. Now that's an opportunity. We're, we're doing the technique that builds all the value and rapport. And then we're coming back 10 minutes later and reclosing them. You know, I know you guys have heard me talk about it. When I had the, the office, I, the agents that were sitting there in my office were not allowed to give a price within 40 minutes. I wanted 40 minutes of nonstop rapport before they dropped the close. Now we're doing it at half that time. You're waiting 20, 25 minutes. 25 minutes is better, right? The more time you spend just talking about whatever, you're building rapport. And then once they say, well, I got to talk to my kids first, then we're using that as the opportunity. Don't give a price that's too low. Expect that and see it as an opportunity. If your mindset is, man, I just want to sell something. Man, I just hope that, that this is a, they're just going to gonna be a quick buyer, a low hanging fruit. I, I just need an easy lay down. If you're going into this with that mindset, you're going to have issues because you're teaching yourself to think the wrong way about these folks and about the way sales as a whole works. All right. The second thing, which is the big fail that I, I that we talk about is agents that kind of go off the script. So Nate uses it, like he said, he it's he kind of uses it as a guide, but he doesn't subtract anything from it in, in most cases. Okay, because I've heard some of his calls. He, do, he doesn't sit there and try it all out. Let me try to figure out a way to do less. And I'm telling you, I, I hear agents that are giving the price within the first 10 minutes. And then those are always the agents that complain that they're not selling. <laughs> You're not, I'm not buying from you in 10 minutes on, on, on a life insurance sale if I'm on a fixed income. I, you know, that's just not reality. Nobody's going to do that. And the people that do that, and so the next thing you know, you're off the phone. You, Whoa, that was a 20-minute call. It's a done deal. The next thing you know, guess what? They're calling to cancel because they don't trust you because now they're getting buyer's remorse going, wait a minute, what did I just do? Who the hell was that I was talking to? No, no, guys. Build the rapport, spend time, follow the script. Guys, if you can read the script word for word and sound like you're just talking and basically and sound like you're not reading word for word, 
you are going to be so much better off if you just use it as a guide. But if you're going to use it more as a guide, you got to add to it. In other words, don't do less words than in the script. You need to do more words than are in the script. Because if you do less words, now you're going to get more objections. You're giving the price too early. You're not building enough value or rapport. Now, Nate recovers from this a little bit. Well, no, a lot. Because he has this personality where he just he's the type of person where you can just talk with him. He'll, he'll you, you, you want to have a good conversation with somebody, Nate's the guy. That type of, I want to say natural, it's like a natural thing that he does is what saves him. But let me just say this, guys, you know, like Phil, I've noticed with him and Phil, I'm going to bring Phil into this because Phil's, Phil's got more talk time per client than any other agent. And Nate's right behind him. That's the one thing about Phil and Nate. So you hear you got two new agents. They haven't been with us very long, both kicking butt, doing great. They're spending time yapping with these people. You know, by the time they close the sale, a lot of a lot of these calls I'm seeing are, you know, an hour and a half or longer. You know, that's a long time, but it works. <laughs> it, it works. Guys, do not go off script when you do the close. When you go to give the price, if you're saying your own words and your own thing, and you're not a, a like super talented professional closer, you are blowing sales. Follow the script, especially during the close. That's a big fail for new agents. Bingo. That would be my advice. Like I would say, like, you know, when I asked Nate for my advice is just trust, knowing what I know about seeing all new agents coming in and the agents that I've worked with and seen come and go, man, that's that's the gold right there. The presentation that we use, it's proprietary for a reason. There's a reason that we will never share it with anybody who's not on our platform. And it's because it took us years to develop and it freaking works, man. It really, really, really works.